Hi everyone, it's Diani. I'm elated to welcome you back to another electrifying video. In our last tutorial, we demonstrated on how to supercharge your form functionality with JavaScript within the Power Platform. But today, we are taking it up a notch. We'll show you on how to achieve the same magic using TypeScript. But wait, before we embark on an exhilarating journey, I've got a little favor to ask. Hit that subscribe button, show us some love with a thunderous thumbs up, and let your thoughts rain down in the comment section down below. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, you might be wondering, why TypeScript when JavaScript can do the job? Well, TypeScript is a game changer. It's a free and open source high-level programming language developed by, yes, you guessed it, Microsoft. It adds static typing with optional type annotations to JavaScript, making it ideal for building large applications. TypeScript helps you catch errors as you write your code and enforces strict rules during compilation, forcing you to fix the syntax and other issues before your code even builds. Plus, in an IDE or a code editor like VS Code, it adds code completion and intelligence, making coding a breeze. Let's not forget, you can easily use external libraries or modules via NPM. It's a win-win situation. All right, no more suspense. Let's dive into the scripting adventure. Fire up Visual Studio Code and open your project folder. For today's tutorial, I've chosen the TypeScript demo folder. Close the welcome screen and bid farewell to the .vs code folder. We won't be needing it. Open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code. Type npm install typescript dash dash save dash dev to kickstart our project and install the typescript module. Take a look at our project folder. It's got a few files and a node modules directory. The package.json will hold all our settings and installed packages. And as you can see, we've got typescript version 5.2.2 all set up. Next, type the command on the screen, npx tsc init to initiate TypeScript and create a tsconfig.js file for our project to store configurations. Now, the tsconfig.json file comes with lots of comments and config we don't need. Let's tidy it up. Start by removing all comments. We don't want to get any confusion. Once the comments are out of the way, we add the following settings. You can find them in the video description. These settings primarily set up linting, specifying JavaScript versions, and enable source maps so that our project knows the source files when debugging in VS Code or your browser's developer tools. With our TS config file looking good, create an SRC folder. This is where we'll house all our TypeScript files and other supporting files. In the source folder, create a new file called index.ts. Think of it as our main.js in JavaScript or Node projects. Now, we need one more package, add types slash XRM. This package will give us IntelliSense specifically for Dynamics or XRM types. And this is one of TypeScript's amazing perks. With that done, set up our folder structure. Start with entity, contact, forms. In the forms folder, create contact form .ts. You can also create another for the account entity or table. Let's get coding. Create your contact form class. Add on load, on save, and attach event functions. Notice how, unlike before, when we coded in JavaScript, we now have IntelliSense guiding our way. Beautiful, isn't it? We'll also add static form types for CRUD operations when opening forms in Dynamics 365 or our model-driven apps. Call the attach event function to attach any on-change functions when the form loads. In the onload function, add some code to handle form type scenarios and logs for debugging purposes later. Then add the validate ID number and auto populate ID related fails function. But wait, these functions don't exist yet. Let's go ahead and create them. Don't forget to prefix them with this to keep things organized. Let's move the form types to their own file for reusability. Don't forget to import the form types into the contact form. TypeScript will keep you on the right track. 
Attach functions for the on change event. Now export the contact form module in index.ts. Details TypeScript where to find the files to build into our compiled JavaScript file. Now, before we proceed, let's install Webpack. While we don't strictly need it, it simplifies our building process by converting our custom files into static assets, optimizing the build files. Create the following files webpack.common.js, webpack.dev.js, and webpack.prod.js. You can find the configuration for these files in the video description. With that said, configure our build script, open package.json and add the following lines in the script section. Remember, all of this setup is a one-time thing when setting up the project. Moving forward, you will be focusing on writing functionality in your custom TypeScript files. Let's test out our configuration. In the terminal, type npm build or npm start or npm dist. Let's start with npm start. This command monitors changes in our code using the dev config from our webpack files. You'll notice we now have a dist folder with a client hooks.js file in it. This file is built based on our commands and any changes we make in our project will be reflected here. We are also going to upload this file in our Power Platform solution to test our functionality. Oops, I made a mistake. It's an import instead of an export for contact form. Let's fix that. As you can see in the terminal, there were some errors initially and the project couldn't build successfully. However, after after fixing the issues, it now builds like a charm. Now that our project has built successfully, let's add our client hooks.js as a web resource in our solution. In our solution, click add more web resource. Choose the file from the disk folder. Give it a display name and a name and click save. Open the contact form for editing. Go to forms libraries to add our new web resource to the form. Once it's loaded, in the side pane on the right, go to the events tab and click event handler under the onload section. In the library dropdown, select our new web resource. In the function field, type cds.lighthooks.contactform.onload and make sure to check the enable end and pass execution as the first parameter checkboxes. Click the done button. Let's tidy up by removing the old handler so there is no confusion and click the save and publish button. Now let's head to our model driven app and test the code. Open a new contact form. Grab a random ID number and watch the code work its magic. As you can see, the code seems to be running smoothly. Let's open our browser's developer tools by pressing F12 on our keyboards. Let's hide this uncaught error for now. It's nothing to worry about. Our contact form.ts has ran and logged some lines. In the developer tools console, we can see our contact form.ts has run and logged some lines. If you go to the source tab, contact form the JS is loaded and you can set breakpoints to debug the code just as we wrote it in TypeScript. And there you have it. In today's tutorial, we took you on a step-by-step -step journey from setting up your project using Node.js and installing TypeScript and supporting packages, configuring your project for building for dev environments and production adding your script to the Power Platform, editing it, and finally testing your code on a form or a model-driven app form. If you found this tutorial a thrill as we did, give us a virtual high five by hitting that like button. And hey, if you're hungry for more thrilling content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for tuning in and happy coding.